So hey guys, OFD checking in here, and today I wanted to just kind of take a kind of a quick look at, talk about. This isn't really a review per se because um, it's this is a watch that I I picked up here recently, and it's just something I wanted to show you um, that I've added to my collection. I wouldn't quite call this a vintage watch because um, I don't think it's really all that old, but. Uh, it kind of falls into a collector's category or something like that for me. Just something I kind of wanted to uh, have in the collection. And I got lucky enough to stumble upon this. So if you guys are collectors of watches and stuff like that, you know it's always nice to have um, some sort of a mechanical chronograph in your collection. You know, And I mean, obviously, you know, probably one of the most famous uh, mechanical chronographs nowadays would be you know, your Omega Speedmaster um, or Rolex Daytona or, you know, I know Tudor at Basel World this last year just released another uh, a new mechanical chronograph watch in their lineup. So very neat. There's a lot that goes into building a mechanical chronograph watch. Um, you know, it's just much easier to build a quartz uh, chronograph. And then I know Seiko has done the Mecha Quartz, which are kind of a combination of a quartz and a mechanical um, flyback. Uh, or spring back um, setting for the chronograph but this watch right here um, I picked up at a swap meet locally if you guys watch my videos you uh, probably saw the video where I picked up this uh, F91W and a Timex uh, Viscount a 1974 Timex Viscount I'll get a review of, of that one here down the road too but this is a watch that just kind of caught my eye and um, I was dealing with a guy that had stuff from like a, like an SKX uh, 009 he wanted like $200 for it, which was ridiculous for a used watch, a used SKX. No box or anything. I mean, it was really clean. It looked nice. But, you know, when you go to a swap meet, you know, that's that's standard retail pricing there. And he also had a Vostok in the box, you know, and his big thing was that it was automatic. And, wow, it's an automatic watch from Russia. And I, big deal. Um, he wanted $150 for that, which was just out of control. But also, as I was looking through there, I noticed this. Um, and forgive my pronunciation, guys. I'm not really good at this, but it, this is a Poyot. Poyot. I think it's the way it's pronounced. I don't know. Uh, chronograph. And I knew just a tiny bit enough about these um, just to know that they're, people kind of like them. People look for them and stuff like that. So um, the guy wanted $50 for the watch. I offered him $40 cash, and he took it. So pretty good deal. Now, if you guys look at the back there and you can look at that number, it's like 427695. If you guys are familiar at all with um, dating these watches, if that number helps you, that would be great. That'd be great. Now, when I bought this watch, it was on a really cheap Spidel um, stretchy bracelet, kind of retro cool, but I did have a actually another Spidel 18 millimeter band, this uh, leather sitting around, so I put it on here. But just a little bit about this watch. Um, everything on it's working. When I got it, it wasn't. Um, the crown was stuck. The pushers were stuck. It almost looked like uh, like battery acid from like another watch had gotten in here and just corroded this. And it didn't corrode it, but it was all stuck. And brought it home. And with a little TLC and a little work with some tools, I was able to get the crown functioning again, get it working. The pusher for starting and stopping the chronograph here is working. The only thing that isn't working now, the spring works and everything like that. So it makes me think that possibly um, there's a, I think a left-handed screw for the, for the uh, pusher in this movement here. And I'm not sure if maybe that's backed off or something like that. I have opened the back of the case and I'll put some video uh, at the end of this of the movement operating. It's absolutely beautiful, a little 23 joule hand wind um, chronograph movement but uh, yeah so I'll probably end up taking this to a watchmaker and see uh, if he can't help me out with that or I may take it out myself and look at it when I did pull the back off I was able to get the crown out of the watch no problem check that out it came came out nice and everything inside the movement was really clean looking as you will see if you stick around to the end so this movement in this watch is a uh, hand winding 3133 uh, movement and from what I understand it's kind of based on a Daju 7734 um, I did some reading on it and people will kind of go around and say that you know the machines were stolen and or hijacked and used to actually build these movements but um, the, the base movement itself I think it's the base plate and stuff like that on these 
3133 movements from my reading is quite a bit bigger. So although a lot of the parts are interchangeable, it's not you can't drop one of these into a Swiss case. It's just a little bit bigger of a movement. So the 7734, the difference too is it's an 18 joule movement, whereas this is a 23 joule movement, and they use those jewels in a lot of the you know, key areas of the watch that could really be improved by that. Also, the Valju is an 18,000 vibration per hour uh, movement, whereas this is a 21,600 vibration per hour movement. So runs at a smoother, smoother rate like that. <clears throat> now, from reading and stuff like that, you know, they say that the power reserve on these is 40 hours plus, and uh, I believe it. You know, it's a hand wind, and it really takes quite a bit of winding to get it wound all the way up. And then once it does, it runs for... From what I can tell for over two days, I've left this thing running for two days and it runs uh, no problem. So very cool watch. Um, you know, I'd, I'd had some people inquire and, and talk about maybe when I did a video on this. So, you know, just a kind of a, a quick, um, you know, quick little view on uh, how this, you know, I got this watch, $40. I'll probably get some more work done to it. But honestly, it's a pleasure it's really a pleasure to wear just the way it is right now. I'm going to show you guys the size of this watch here real quick just to give you an idea. It's not a tiny, tiny little watch, but it's, it's really a great size. So without the crown on this watch, let's see here, get on the big part. Yeah, you're looking like 37, 37 and a half. So it's under 38 millimeter, which is pretty nice little size. And then from lug to lug... Uh, I can't get it exactly on there, but you're looking at right about 44. Um, and then it is a thick watch because of this chronograph uh, movement on here. It's like 12.7, so almost 13 millimeters thick. But um, definitely, man, I, I'll tell you what, for $40 at a swap meet, I think these are kind of those little treasures you find. And uh, it's just a, a great piece to add to the collection. Now, I, I all I've done... Um, I haven't done any cleaning to this watch besides just some real gentle cleaning, use some rubbing alcohol and stuff like that around the pushers and stuff like that just to kind of clean the watch up a little bit. And I did use some, um, just rub a little toothpaste actually on the uh, dial of the watch to get a little bit of, or on the crystal. This is an acrylic crystal. Look at the dome on that, guys. Dome on that acrylic crystal. But I, I did rub it, somebody advised rubbing just a little bit of toothpaste on there to make it shine. And man, it really did it knock down a lot of the micro scratches and uh, make it made it really look nice. So I enjoy wearing this watch. I mean, believe it or not, I've worn this watch quite a few times. I've worn it out to dinners and stuff like that. And I enjoy, you know, when you find something like this, a little treasure to add to your collection. And, you know, a lot of people are going to say, oh, it's nothing fancy. And it, it isn't. It's nothing really fancy. But the fact that this is a hand wind mechanical chronograph um, that I was able to pick up for $40 at a swap meet sure is a lot of fun guys it sure is a lot of fun so if you like this video give me a thumbs up down there at the bottom and if you guys haven't subscribed to the UFD channel please do please do thanks guys